Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this epic succulent inspired cake. I'll be working with a five inch and a seven inch cake tier, but if you'd like to learn how to crumb code and structure your cakes, click the little eye icon up top. Here I'm creating a final layer of frosting with the hybrid buttercream. The recipe will also be linked in the eye or in the description box below. Go around with your frosting comb to smooth down the sides. You can keep it just as is nice and smooth, but I went in with my um, mini inverted triangle frosting comb. So you can check out the comb range uh, in the description box as well or in the eye again. And this just creates really, really pretty textures around the outside of your buttercream cakes. I like to go around one full swing without stopping to make sure that the texture is nice and even and you can't see where it begins and ends. With the spatula, bring that lip of frosting to the center and then pop your cake into the fridge to set for at least 20 minutes or into the freezer to set for 10 minutes even. Follow the exact same steps with your bottom tier. The bottom tier that I've used is a seven inch cake. If you'd like to learn how to make mud cakes, for example, like this one, I'll have a playlist for you guys and where you can find out those recipes. Go over again with the textured frosting comb. One full swing to make sure that there's no start and end. And where you pull off becomes the back of your cake. Again, bring that lip of frosting to the center and then back into the fridge they go to set completely. In the meantime, we're gonna work on our succulents. So this is baking paper that I've cut down to squares and I have a frosting nail ready to go into a piping bag fitted with a 101 piping tip. I'm grabbing some yellow on one side and green buttercream on the other side. This again is a hybrid buttercream recipe that I like to use. Start in the middle of the piping of the floral nail and stick on your um, baking paper. Create a zigzag dollop right in the center and then arch for the petals at the very middle to make a nice closed um, bud. You do this by angling the piping tip inwards and then as you reach further out and you keep arching to create those petals that piping tip becomes less and less angled so it opens up the flower and because we had two colors we now have a pretty yellow in the middle and as it comes out it's a bit more green create at least five of each flower and I've used three flowers here I'll have a link in the description box which piping tip I use, but this is a piping tip that makes chrysanthemums. Start at the outside of that base circle you piped, and then as you get closer and closer to the middle, angle your piping tip further up to create a more 3D looking rose, uh, 3D looking chrysanthemum. This is just a leaf tip, and I followed the same steps as I did for the chrysanthemum before this one. Again, two-toned buttercream used here as well. Pop all your flowers onto a baking tray and into the freezer they go to set completely. This could take about half an hour. In the meantime, I have bubble tea straws, but you could use dowels. Three of them in a triangular formation, cut flush to the very top of the cake, and then sticking a cake board on with some buttercream. Normally I'd stick my cake on top, which already has a cake board underneath it. I completely forgot to have the cake board underneath my five inch, which is why I'm doing it now. But you always need to have a cake board at the very top um, to make sure that the straws don't dig into your top cake and kind of um, eat through it and uh, collapse into the bottom tier. It's a whole process, just make sure you have that cake board underneath. Stick your cake on top. And then to hide the seams, I'm just piping in some white buttercream at the very base where the two cakes meet and smoothing that down with a spatula. For some added uh, kind of interest, I've added on some gold leaf. You can skip that step if you like, but to make sure that the gold leaf is stuck on it properly and you can see the texture of your frosting comb, I've used a brush to push that gold leaf into the corners. Your finger probably wouldn't be able to do quite the same job. To start off the succulent design, I've got some green buttercream in a very small piping tip and I'm creating vines. You don't want them to go straight down the cake, let them zigzag and curve a little bit to add a bit of interest and be sure to space them out at least a centimeter to two centimeters away from each other and that way you have room to add in the leaves. With a larger piping tip, again, piping tips will all be listed in the description box below. I'm creating my leaves which are like teardrop shaped. So they start away from the vine and then I bring the piping tip close to the vine and as I do, I relieve the pressure so it creates a thinner section of that piped leaf. 
to resemble a teardrop or a water droplet. You have one on the left and on the right of your pipe divine. And do the same for the very top of the cake again as well. That's our vine base complete. Now for the fun part, creating the succulent bouquet. So the uh, flowers have been sitting in my freezer for a good 30 minutes. I can handle them with my hands without them breaking and I'm sticking them on the cake with some buttercream. You might choose to create some smaller flowers just to use as filler. And I've created the same pattern at the very top as well. So just sticking those flowers on top where the vines are. And creating a white pearl border where the two cakes meet to close it all off. To fill in the spaces in between, I've created some white little buds. And then I've gone into that center again to create the flower, which is in yellow. As a finishing touch, you might want to add in some leaves as well. And that is how you create a really fun and easy to do succulent cake with the cascading or draping vines. I personally think that is the feature here of this cake. I love the look of the vines. You can also leave the side of your cake smooth. I decided to go in with my inverted triangle frosting comb. I'll have a link to where you can find those as well. They're really, really fun and they add really cool textures to the side of your cake. And that's tutorial for this Tuesday. Thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you do recreate this, please do tag us a hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot so we can see it on Instagram. Just like these awesome creations. We have Very Licious Creations, Cake Me Smile, Emily Phoebe 97 and Miss Massey at up top here. Thank you guys so much for tagging us. Your cakes look amazing. For your chance to be shared on our videos, don't forget to do that hashtag. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys again next week.